Okay, so this is a puppy. She has not had a heat cycle, so I always check the, that first. So pretty much same rules as a cat. So you got your cranial, your umbilicus, cranial aspect of the pubis. You're gonna go smack in the middle for six months and younger, and then kind of work your way up. And so she is probably about seven months. So I'm gonna go right there for her. Now the difference between dogs and cats is more sub Q in the doggies. So I just pick that up, you can cut it. We're gonna close the sub Q in dogs, unlike cats, so it really doesn't matter how much you cut away because you're gonna close it. So just give yourself a really good visual of that linea. Dogs also are much easier to pick up than cats. See how I'm not dropping, picking up, dropping, picking up. I try to have every motion deliberate. Every time you touch tissue, you're gonna do damage to that tissue. So just do your best to only hold what you need to. Okay, spay hook. She's younger, so I'm gonna be going back a little bit. Not too much, because my incision is also back. But make sure in dogs, that spleen is right there. So you almost wanna be seeing that spay hook as it goes down. All the way down, in, almost to the middle and then straight up. Okay, I can feel it in there. It's gonna be tight for these little babies. So don't pull too, too hard, just very gently. You can see it there, but you can see how tight that is in her. She's a little baby. So. I like the butt end of this to get your momentum back in. And remember the drier that your tissue is, the, sorry, I'm talking so loud, but I want to make sure <laughs> the drier your tissue is, the harder it is, it'll stick to stuff. So try not to be constantly dabbing it unless you really need to be. This is just a little trick. All right, so same thing as I tell you in cats. This is as far as I can pull it, it's, it's hard here. If I want visualization, I'm not gonna pull harder, I'm gonna push. Look at the, look how much, so I'm, See how my hand, I'm seeding my hand here? So I'm not accidentally pulling or continuing to put pressure on that. So I've got, this hand is stable. And that's where the scariness with your pedicle comes in is because people will start pulling both at the same time. And then when this snaps, they tear their pedicle. So seed your hand or hold your hand steady and just have that, that thought in your head. So now that I've pushed this and I've gotten this exposure, you can, you can pretty much see this suspensory here. And you know, why is this so different than what you see at some places or at school? Super important to note, we don't tie our dogs. So we use the trough, right? And so this part of the dog is not stretched. If you stretch this part of the dog, this gets sucked up more into the abdomen. So you get much better visualization when your dog is in a trough and its legs are just loose. If you are using proper anesthesia, you should not need to tie your dog because it's not going to wake up on you. So. That fear shouldn't be there if you were using good anesthesia. So in these puppies, a couple things. I can just do this and I can pull it towards me. I tend to use this position in the adult, the larger adult dogs, because you get a little more leverage, is hold this suspensory, take this finger and wrap it around that ligament, almost like I'm wrapping my, my fingernail around it. And then you hold that taut and stretch it till it pops. Or sometimes in puppies, you can even just put your finger here and stretch it. Okay. And you don't even need to pop it. See how much more leverage I'm getting? So just, and so really as soon as you have enough out that you can get your two clamps and suture around, stop messing with it. I have seen people pop the kidney out of puppies. So uh -huh. if it's really, really tight and it doesn't wanna go any further, then just leave it. So leave yourself a little bit between your clamps. Okay. So we still do the three clamps. And leave a little bit of tissue. Again, we have really good instruments here. We've got these caramels, so the caramels on top. If you're gonna do shelter, sometimes you're not always gonna have awesome instruments. And so I leave a little tissue up here because that way if this is a little tighter and you see it start to slip, you've got a chance to get another clamp under there. So that's just a FYI for shelter med or even some private practices I've been at don't have great instruments. So this is where 
the Millers that I show you guys makes it easier, makes your life easier. So now I have my pedicle, my big scary pedicle that everyone is afraid to touch. Sticking a needle through that is scary. Okay, and it bleeds. So let's just do the Millers. So the way I do the Millers is I don't ever, ever have to let go of this. So I go around, pretend like that's same as a dog neuter, that same motion. Okay, up, around, up, and pinch. So same that you would do on a neuter, but now I get to do all of my scary stuff over here and I'm not touching that. So now make sure this is big enough for your pedicle, holding my knot and all I'm doing is slipping it over and turning it. Okay, and again, in some dogs, that's gonna be tighter than others. So say, so I do this, but that's because I'm super comfortable. Here's a little trick, you can do that. Okay. All right, you're gonna pull. I'm gonna show you what I do on this pedicle, and then I'll show you what you guys can do at the beginning on the other. I do what's called one-handed flash. Wrap that all the way down. And then I do this like a gun. And then I flash. So as I flash that, I push. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. And then that's just for backup now. You can get rid of it or not, depending on your pedicle. For this little doggy, I'm not really scared that it's gonna slip in, so I could just get rid of that, but I'm showing you that in case you have a scary <laughs> one. Okay, so now that's nice and tight. Now, once you're more advanced, like I just do that one, I'm done. Okay. okay. So that's how you get the speed. I'm perfectly comfortable with that knot. I've used this knot a million times. When you're learning, your knots are not going to be as tight. So just do another one. Right above. And the way you kind of get it to not slip down there mm -hmm. is, again, you, you hold your hands this way to keep that knot up at the top there. Okay. So now I have a second one. Okay. All right, the other reason I like this for beginners is you can use it to check your pedicle. And remember tension will keep it from bleeding. So I like to just slip it back a little bit into my abdomen to check it. No bleeding, let it go. All right, so same as cats, I always recommend you grab this and then find your round, okay? Get rid of it. And same as, uh, this, this girl's being very friendly, <laughs> easy. But if you were here, pulling, pulling, same thing, you can pull back and down, push down, and it pops that out, okay? All right, so up to this. So again, you have choices of wrap your fingernail around and pluck it. Hold it like this and really get your whole, that whole leverage of your finger in there. Pop it. Do you guys see that pop? Or stretch it. So, okay. So getting your clamps on also, some tricks. Be open. So you're going to be really nervous and stiff. So just remember to open your wrist, open it, like push a little bit away from you. This pinky, and it, it's going to cramp and be uncomfortable when you're learning. Kind of use that hand to create that frame. And I know I'm making it look super easy and when you try to do it, it's gonna feel like you're all thumbs, but that's why you watch this video a thousand times so you can trust yourself. I would leave a little more if you can, but. Okay, so now up around, up around. Okay, got my Millers. Okay, if you can, or put your scissors in there. So what you guys are gonna do, if you can't do that one-handed, is pull towards yourself, okay? Now just loosen that. Use your back up. Pull it on. This is where those scissors will help you if you get the scissors in there, back in there. Second 
and I will grab, I like the spool suture because I do have choice of suture. So her size dog, you would, might, might consider going up to Ott because she's so, she's a little bit heavier and bigger. But because she hasn't had a heat cycle, I knew her parts were going to be smaller. So I like the two Ott because you're not slay flatter. You can get it a little bit tighter around there than the Ott. thing, find your artery, find your, get rid of that. And there you got bifurcation. In your peds, take note to not go too far down. I know they make a big deal um, in school about being right above your cervix. It really doesn't matter. Most countries do ovariectomies and leave all of this behind. So it doesn't, for the sake of your dog, it doesn't matter how close you are to the cervix. If you're a peed and you accidentally take the cervix, then your dog could have incontinence problems. So I like to go right there by the bifurcation in my youngins. Oh, and then I, in a big dog, I would do a Miller's here. So let's just pretend like it's a big dog. and always, always do too. There are some Humane Alliance videos or trainings that say to do, just do one Miller's. I do not recommend that. I do a lot of training. I fix a lot of other people's problems. I see a lot of post-op bleeding when people try to do just one Miller's. Cause if that suture, it is a tight suture. It really does cinch down. If it tears through your uterus at all, you don't have a backup. The dog's just gonna keep bleeding. So that first circumferential, suture that you place, if your Miller's ties through or tears through, you've got that back up. Okay, leave a good centimeter of tissue, cats, dogs, whoever, because all of this stuff shrinks post-op. Your knots are going to loosen a little post-op. You don't want them to fall off the edge. So make sure you're leaving a centimeter. Not too much because the body has to break that down, but all right, then we close. So here's the beauty of the small incision. Now I can close this in pretty quickly. Again, just your external rectus. You can see those layers really well in this video here. Muscle, external rectus, that's all I need. Again, if you keep your line, just hold up there. You can do cruciates or interruptives. Your shoe's just end up being faster because you're like, taking up more space. Yeah. When that is close to two, so you could argue some good for patient comfort. Then I'm gonna do, now I wanna close, this is your Linea is your holding layer. This is just closing dead space. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be tight. It doesn't, whoops, don't do that. <laughs> you don't have to crush it because you're just closing this dead space up. So in fact, don't crush it because it's not comfortable to your patient. Okay, and then closing. And then when you manage to keep your incisions this small, If it's bigger for any reason, just close it exactly how we close a dog nader. Because remember, you already have that linea incision in there. And so you can close your sub-Q and your skin in that continuous pattern because it's not a holding, there's not gonna be a lot of tension on it. That ties right down as long as you keep it that way. And then always make sure, see the pucker and that's, that can happen. My not still buried, but see how the skin edges were. So just gently, very gently, make sure your skin edges are opposed. So your knot and suture isn't sticking through. Like that. We snuck up there and turned her off. They were very smart. Yeah, they did. She's on the game. Okay. Try not to do excessive glue. Your tattoo should only be through the skin, not all the way down to the sub 
and just a tiny bit of, you don't need a lot of this. If you put too much ink in, it'll open up. And then again, make sure it's closed. Done, done. Thank you, Mom. All right, that made sense with 